This example looks at the analysis of a typical truss, uh, such as the one shown in the figure there. It's the sort of structural form that's widely used in maybe a small footbridge, that, that sort of thing. Um, we're asked to find the forces in just three members, so AC, BC and BD. This is typical because the forces in the central members of a truss, such as, as this, are quite often the, the highest forces, and so of most interest. We could, of course, do this using the method of joints, as in the previous example, but that would be quite a lot of work, because we'd have to work from, say, joint E, and then A, then B, and we'd find out forces in members which we weren't interested in. So a better approach is to use what's called the method of sections, um, which is similar. It looks at equilibrium of a piece of, piece of a truss, but rather than just looking at one joint, it looks at, at several members at the same time. So the start is the same as uh, same as always. We need to find some support reactions. It turns out in this case that we only need the reactions at E, which saves us a bit of work. Um, so we'll proceed in a normal way. We'll take moments about F. And if we look at the moments about F, then there are three forces which have moments about F. There's the reaction force at E acting through six metres, the one kilonewton force at A acting through one meter in the same direction, and then in the opposite direction, the force at C acting through three meters. If we work that through, then we get the vertical reaction force at E of 7.3 kilonewtons, so that's acting upwards. Then we'll resolve forces horizontally, and that's very simple. We've just got one horizontal force acting at A, and so that gives us the horizontal reaction at E of minus one kilonewton, so acting to the left. So with the reaction forces in place, we can now apply the method of sections, and the approach is to imagine cutting the truss through the three members we want to find the forces in. So as indicated there on the diagram, we imagine cutting through those three members, and once we've done that, we can draw a free body diagram of the left hand portion of the truss, which will look something like this. And it's got the three forces marked there. So we can now apply moment equilibrium, vertical equilibrium, and horizontal equilibrium to get the forces in those three members. It's generally better with the method of sections to start with moment equilibrium. And it's generally better to start with a taking moments about a point where two of the three forces you're interested in uh, have zero lever arm. So in this case, we'll take moments about point B. And if we do that, then we get this equation. So we have the uh, reaction force multiplied by two meters. We have the one kilonewton load at A by one meter. And then the force in FAC is also acting through one meter. The force BC and BD have no lever arm about B, and so they don't feature in the equation. Doing the, doing the sums, we find that FAC is minus 15.6 kilonewtons, so that's a compressive force. We can then resolve forces vertically, which is fairly straightforward. We've got the 7.3 kilonewtons acting upwards, and then there's the vertical component of the force in BC, also acting upwards. And we're assuming here, of course, that the force in BC is, is positive. As it works out, it too is a compressive force of minus 10.3 kilonewtons. It's a negative sign that tells us it's a compressive force. And then our final equation of equilibrium is horizontal equilibrium. There's a few more terms in this one, but it's, it's still just got one unknown. That's the FBD force. And we find that the force in BD is tensile, it's a positive force of 22.9 kilonewtons.